Hey everyone, if your scooter has been sitting for more than a year, you probably need to clean the carburetor. This scooter needed a lot more work than that, and I have an hour and a half long movie about it here. This video is just about the carburetor. The first step to cleaning the carburetor is removing it from the scooter. There are a lot of plastic body panels in the way. Let's get the seat out of the way. This access panel down here is big enough to pull the carburetor out, but I'll go ahead and remove all the rear plastic so you can see what I'm doing. Finally, I can take the seat compartment out. Now I have access to the engine. First thing I see, this is the carburetor. Looks like somebody didn't hook up the throttle correctly. When I twist the throttle, it gets stuck. Is it the carburetor or is it the cable? Let's find out. With the cable disconnected, the carburetor snaps back just fine. The cable has a lot of resistance in it. We're going to need a new throttle cable. This is the idle enricher, and this is the intake manifold. Here we have a vacuum hose that goes into a little T, it goes to the side of the carburetor, and then it goes up to the fuel petcock on the gas tank. This is the fuel inlet hose to the carburetor, and this is the fuel filter. This is the ignition coil. This is the wire that goes to the idle enricher. Unplug the idle enricher and disconnect the throttle cable from the carburetor. Remove two nuts from the intake manifold and pull off this vacuum hose. It's easier to push the fuel hose off with a screwdriver than to pull on it. This hose with the metal around it is the float bowl drain hose. And the carburetor is out. Let's go through the carburetor to make sure it's ready to go back in the scooter. Four Phillips head screws hold the float bowl. Using an impact driver can help break them loose. There's a little bit of sediment at the bottom, but overall it looks clean. The gasket looks flat and should be replaced. A small pin holds the floats. Slide it out. The fuel inlet valve is attached to the floats. The small piece in the middle of the carburetor is called the main jet. It has a tiny hole in the middle and you should be able to see through it. This one is clean. My scooter has a 105 jet. Stock size is usually somewhere between 105 and 110. The longer jet is called the pilot jet and controls fuel just above idle. You should also be able to see through this jet. The carburetor also has a vacuum hose going from the intake manifold to this thing on the side. The black plastic part with the wires is called the idle enricher. For the first three minutes the scooter is on, it adds extra fuel before the engine is warm, making it easier to start when it's cold outside. The intake manifold can have one or two vacuum ports on it. Mine has one. The top of the carburetor has a spring behind it, and this is where the vacuum operated throttle slide lives. When you need to accelerate, the slide moves up, letting more air in. It also pulls up the needle, which lets more fuel in. The idle mixture screw is located on the intake manifold side of the carburetor. This is the body of the carburetor. Air comes in through the bigger side and speeds up as it's squeezed down to the smaller side. The throttle plate opens when you twist the throttle and allows the engine to suck air through the carburetor. The fast moving air in the middle of the carburetor pulls fuel out of the float bowl through the main jet and past the needle. Changing the size of the jets is how you adjust the air to fuel ratio. I didn't have any carburetor cleaner, but this GDI cleaner seems to work even better. Make sure to spray the cleaner through every passage in the carburetor. If the scooter was left sitting for more than two years with old gas, some of these holes could be completely plugged. If it's horrible and you can't get the spray to go through the carburetor, just give up and buy a new carburetor. It's only $37. You can also buy a new main jet. Stock size is usually between 105 and 110. The bigger sizes are for engines with performance modifications, like a bigger cylinder. Stock size for an idle jet is usually between 32 and 35. A carburetor rebuild kit with new floats, gasket, and jets is also available. The toothbrush works really well to break all the dirt loose. Just make sure to rinse it off before you give it back to your roommate. Finally, use compressed air to make sure there isn't any dirt stuck inside the carburetor. I made sure each little piece was clean and dry. Did I mention these parts are small? If you drop them on the ground, they will evaporate and you'll never find them again. No big deal, just buy a new carburetor if that happens to you. The idle mixture screw has a small spring and a washer on it. The spring keeps tension on the threads so it doesn't turn by itself. 
When you tighten the screw, the tip of it closes off a passage and gives you less fuel at idle. Tighten the screw until it stops turning, then back it up 1.5 turns. Next, reinstall the main and pilot jets. Hang the float valve on the metal bracket on the floats and guide it into its hole as you install the floats. The pin holds the floats in place. I'm blowing air into the fuel inlet. When the floats are parallel with the body of the carburetor, the fuel flow stops. If the valve opens when the floats are too high or too low, bend the metal bracket that holds the valve slightly until it opens and closes when the floats are level. This is the float bowl drain. Some carburetors will have a screw here that opens and closes the drain. Normally the drain goes to a hose that lets you drain the carburetor for winter storage so the old gas doesn't create varnish that plugs your jets. I don't want the hose and I could put a rubber cap here, but it could split and leak after a couple years. I'm heating the brass pipe with a torch and filling it with solder instead. Solder is a mixture of lead and tin and will stick to the metal permanently. It can't leak. I no longer have a float bowl drain and that's what I wanted. Reinstall the four screws and make sure to do the final tightening by hand. They don't need to be super tight. Reinstall the slide into the top of the carburetor and hold it perfectly straight so the needle can go into the hole. Push the edges of the diaphragm into the groove. Install the cap and tighten two screws. The idle enricher adds fuel for the first three minutes the scooter is on. It's held in by this clip and two screws. Install the intake manifold and tighten the hose clamp. Don't forget the vacuum hose from the intake manifold to the side of the carburetor. Cleaning the carburetor takes about an hour and all you need is some cleaning spray. If the scooter has been sitting for more than a year, you'll need to clean the carburetor. If both jets are completely plugged, just buy a new carburetor and skip the cleaning. Slide the intake manifold straight down over the studs and tighten the two nuts with a 10 mm socket. These throttle cables always have a rubber boot at the end. When the boot gets old, it can split and cause the throttle to get stuck. Install the end of the cable, then install the cable housing into the bracket. Adjust the throttle cable so the throttle can fully open and it snaps closed when you let go. There should be a little play in the throttle before it pulls the cable. My throttle doesn't snap closed as quickly as it should. This grip doesn't turn very well, or maybe the cable is getting pinched behind the plastic. A sticking cable is dangerous because the engine can stick at full throttle when you need to be slowing down. I'll have to take this back apart and figure out what's wrong. Notice how the carburetor doesn't go back to closed throttle right away. I looked at my other Chinese scooter and it's a bit slow too. On my Honda scooter, the throttle snaps closed immediately. With Chinese scooters, quality and safety are not a priority. Slide the air intake tube over the carburetor. The rubber on the intake is not seating properly because it's made of that crappy rubber that gets deformed and hard. That means I need a new air box. I won't be replacing it, I'll just clamp it. This old hose clamp didn't work, so I got one from the auto parts store. The air box is held onto the top of the transmission with two brackets. Loosen both brackets, install the bolts, then tighten it back down. Let's see if this scooter runs. That's pretty good. Thanks for watching and remember to check out my Chinese scooter playlist for more repair videos. See you next time.